So uh, my name is uh, Adam Strang. I work for the 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing. Uh, we're located at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Um, I got to give this disclosure and disclaimer, right? I have no uh, conflicts of interest and the opinions I'm expressing are mine. They don't reflect the recommendations or endorsement of the US Air Force. So here's a little bit of a background. So I basically run the coolest exercise science lab in the Department of Defense, like hands down. Um, we really established and rebranded ourselves about uh, back in January of 2015. And I just happen to be one of the researchers that is a part of this lab. We set up the Strong Lab as a shared laboratory space to promote collaboration across the human performance wing. So we have biomedical engineers, chemists, psychobiologists, exercise physiologists. I'm an athletic trainer and cognitive psychologist, uh, software engineers, and strength coaches. Um, back in around 2014, 2015, uh, my former partner Josh Hagen and I kind of had this idea of developing a dashboard for the human weapons system, right? And this was on the heels of wearables happening, right? All of a sudden we were just flooding the market with wearables and we want to figure out what to do with them. And for a long time we were thinking, oh my gosh, um, we need to develop our own software platform. This is where we were four or five years ago. So we're like out soliciting different software companies presenting this type of idea and trying to figure out how we're going to assimilate all these types of technologies so we can get to something like this. I need a readiness dashboard. I want to know how many calories are born, uh, burned. I need to know core temperature and hydration status in this kind of nice uh, color-coded dash. So in between here and when we started using Smartabase, what we, what we embarked on was like optimizing the human weapon system with all these different components. So for instance, we started using uh, Zephyr bands um, especially inside our training pipelines for um, heat, and, heat and safety uh, monitoring, specifically because the Zephyrs are embedded with the uh, Ucerium Army algorithm that takes its heart rate and does a pretty good job predicting core temperature. And so we've actually been using that, I'd say it's actually more than 75 plus heat injuries that we think we've prevented over the last couple years. So we're turning these kind of technologies into actionable data. We started doing some other field testing with things um, like under, underwater pulse oximetry so that we can um, prevent and stop shallow water blackouts, which is a big attrition inside our special operations pipeline. The swimming component's always the most difficult. And then we started also kind of doing things like, okay, can we do prescriptive recovery um, in training, both in special operations units and with university athletic teams. The real key for working with university athletics is that all the, all, you know, all this, all their game and, and training performance analytics that's going on, on the military side, it's much more nebulous, right? It's like, it's pass fail, or uh, the mission was completed or it wasn't completed. And it's really difficult to monitor the independent components of each operator, but sports has done a little bit better job. So they essentially set up the bullseye that we could aim at for some of the technologies, and then we just kind of took a leap of faith to say, okay, this is what we learned from sport, and then we can maybe transition it over. So we've been doing things like actually trying to look at um, like HRV statistics and trying to predict wins and losses in like women's soccer and stuff like that. And listen, like we're running stacked models, and the best mo we'll show the best model, let's say 77%. The worst model is like chance, so it's not like I'm going to go to Vegas and lay a bet down on it. But that's kind of the direction that we're trying to head, right? So it's one thing to do the data visualization um, and aggregation, which SmartAbase has been fantastic for us, but it's another thing to get prediction um, aligned with that. And we've been working both avenues. All right, so here we go. Phase one of what we, we're calling the Combat 24-7 Fitness System that we started in 2017. We're looking, we were looking for a human performance tool to aggregate um, data from validated human performance technologies that are coming out of our lab. We want to apply custom analytics and algorithms, and then we need to create visualizations that people can digest. Why we need to develop it, I mean, I think it's, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but I love all these um, human performance technologies, our sports science technologies that are coming, but they're all siloed. Every company thinks they're a hardware and software company, and everybody's trying to license you to use their stuff and that you want to use it exclusively. But the truth of the matter is, is like, um, for our, from our perspective, it's sort of like get integrated into something that we can build as a holistic system all the way around so that we can combine our daily physiological monitoring with our movement screens that is, that is overlaid with our injury data. So we said, okay, after looking through everything and testing a lot of the other things that were on the market, it was clear to us that Smartabase, um, at least at present, gives us by far the most flexibility to, to build things out the way that we want to. So it basically works as um, Smartabase we, we selected to power the Combat 24-7 fitness system, and it has the ability to apply all the analytics that we're um, developing inside Strong, 
and it can aggregate data from anywhere um, via the API or CSV uh, exports. And actually, really important to us is that it's going to be HIPAA compliant. So moving forward, um, we, we can have some medical information in there. So I wanted to tell you um, some of the future looks that we're going to be doing for our mi military operational units. The, you're going to notice a lot of things from the Ohio State site that are going to be similar as we move forward. But this is, a great, this is a great example of something in the Air Force that we call the stick man report. It's basically your unit status report. Who is ready to deploy, who is not, not mission ready, and who is partially mission ready if there is such a thing. Um, and this is exactly how it's being created inside the Air Force right now. And what happens is their sports medicine team, they sit around, they create these reports, they give them to a commander, commander checks it off, he sends it up to headquarters, right? Um, and I'm not sure they really use it that well for um, decision making. It's more like just kind of checking a balance and over time saying like, well, what's the, what's the average like availability rate of a certain unit at any time, right? So um, the, the cool thing, or the, the, one of the bad things you'll see is this is a really top down, or like I'd say, uh, across the board horizontal look at it. You can't really dig down and you can't take a macro look, so you can't like compress up and down at will. So this is the, the future stick man report that we've built out in Smarterbase using the uh, player card look. So you can imagine this is one of our special operations unit. The command is logging in from his um, government computer. He's taking a look and he says, I've got 12% mission capable, 8% partially mission capable. And then he can rack and stack by best or worst. And then just like um, Nick was showing on the well-being, on the back end, what he can actually see is his human performance team and their plan of action. So yeah, okay, this guy's got some kind of psych problem. What's the psych problem on the back where? And then, the, then the, I don't take the decision out of the commander's hand. He's, he still decides um, if people are gonna go and where they're gonna go. But at least we have like more of a ridicule look at what the information can be. Oh yeah, and you can do that on your mobile app now. I can show you guys afterwards with all fake data, of course, that's generated in here. There's no real Adam Smith. Or there may be. All right, so here's um, how they used to do, or they're currently doing unit encounters tracking. So this is like the number of treatments when you go in to see your athletic trainer or physical therapist, right? It's all kept on Excel sheets, and this is actually one of the best ones I've seen. Most of them are not this good. And so it takes weeks when a unit or a command comes down to say, hey, how many treatments did you guys do last year? And on this very, this number of body segments, and what's the return on investment for this, right? So one of the things we started doing was building this, this dashboard, which, is all, which actually logs the daily treatments um, for the sports medicine teams. And actually, I can assign a dollar value to each one of those treatments that come in. So when I commit, this happens all the time. Like, these sports medicine teams that are embedded within the units, they're really expensive, right? So we get a question like, what's the return on investment, right? And now I can show you daily, not just where, who's being traded, treated, what are the most common treatments, where are the body areas that they're going, but I can sign a numeric value to each one of those encounters, right? And you can, uh, you know, athletic trainer can turn around and just say, hey man, you know, I, you're getting your bang for your buck, right? And it's really easy for us to take that look. The final one I wanted to show you is, guys is how we're doing uh, current performance tracking. These are like our physical fitness test assessments, right? And right now it's like, again, we're back into Excel. Um, we might do these, you know, once or twice a year if we can actually get the guys back into their home station to get tested. We do some comparison amongst the different, what we'll call flights, those are or troops, or we might do it a, a, across like the, the entire squadron or something like that. But now what we've been able to do is start going in and start building out these athlete hubs. So when we get into the hubs, the level of information gets a lot more detailed. I combine their biannual physical fitness test with all the daily wellness assessments that we're collecting from them whether that's coming from survey data or physiological data. And we have this kind of goal in the laboratory that we're just always pressing toward is ask less and less questions, get more and more objective from physiological, from biophysiological data. So you can see like I can look at the, his number of counters, his FMS, the last time, the last three times he did his pararescue fitness test or his F, or um, the exposures and loads that he's going through during that day. So I get, uh, multiple views of what the, what the state of that operator is if I want to drill down that deeply. Okay, so what's next, all right? So the big thing that, I, that I'm pushing for is integrations. That is where I want to give more um, options and capability for new performance technology to be ingested into Smarterbase. What I'm talking about is wearables, movement screenings, and third-party training apps, things like Train Heroic and Bridge Athletics that we do a lot of our strength and conditioning prescriptions on. They're gonna be vital moving forward. We're moving into the next phase of what we're doing. You saw Nick present on it just a little bit more. We're actually taking that data and then turning around to make suggestions about what the prescription should be. For instance, flagging 
um, three days in a row, high parasympathetic is going to put you in a float tank recovery, or we're gonna, at least we're going to re recommend that type of protocol. We're starting with those and then using hard data and statistics over time to refine whether that decision of a three-day cycle is actually appropriate or, appropriate or not. So it's a kind of always a living beast. We're getting into things like uh, nutrition. So um, what is the impact of like using specifically um, inside of training pipelines different types of nutritional supplements and how's that playing out in their wellness and sleep and other things like that. And again, I talked about the recovery techniques. And finally, the last thing we're going to move into, but this is where, um, actually, frankly, we move into a different like um, security class level, is when we start thinking about we we're, we go after the human capital of our operators, and that is like we can do appointment scheduling inside SmartAbase. We actually have the, the the whole looks already built out, so you can doesn't matter where you're at, where you're deployed, where your TDY, which is like business travel or training travel, you can contact your sports medicine team and set up that appointment and have a dialogue with them as opposed, as opposed to just doing it over email or text as they're currently doing. We can actually um, store an entire unit's battle rhythm that is basically like their mission and deployment training schedule inside here, and we have looks that build that out, but of course we don't go with that live yet, but I think it, we're, we're heading there in the future. And then training evaluations, so you can imagine like whether it's the performance or psychological training evaluation of the cadre of trainees as they're going through their entire career, um, we can store that data and we have certain forms and visualizations already built for that kind of stuff, so that when we actually meet the security requirements that we're going to need to, to use SmartAvation that way in the future, or on any type of management system that um, um, we can just plug and play as soon as we're ready to roll. And thanks for your time. <laughs>